Hi everyone, bonjour à tous and welcome to my channel. Today, as part of my show dedicated to helping you make a great wedding on a budget, we are going to create a beautiful fabric bound thing. Let's get started! Of course, you can make it for many other occasions, such as a baptism, a birth, a birthday, a garden party and so on. You can also decorate a room. We will start by deciding the desired width of our triangle. Then we measure half of this distance and place our roller at 90 degrees to decide the desired length. We mark this length and trace our triangle. It will have at least two identical sides, which is prettier and more convenient to cut, I believe. And if you are satisfied with the size and shape of your triangle, we just need to add 5 mm all around for our seam allowance. It will be plenty enough since we'll be working with plain cotton that doesn't fray much. In my example, the width seam allowance included is 21 cm. In the middle, I trace a perpendicular line to measure the new length, seam allowance included. In my case, 22 cm. Now to easily cut our triangles in the fabric, we will start by cutting long stripes of fabric whose width equal the length of our triangle, seam allowance included, of course. On the stripes, we will place marks corresponding to the width of our triangle, seam allowance included, and join them in order to form several triangles placed head to tail. This technique will save us as much fabric as possible and make the cutting process easy and smooth. Here is the original triangle and its little offsprings. I forgot to mention that we'll need two triangles to make one little flag, but we'll cover that later. Now concerning the fabric, I have three simple cottons, tastefully chosen by the person that ordered this bunting from me. The colors match her theme, but you can pick for yourself whatever fabric strikes your fancy. We will need pre-folded bias as well in the color of your choice. Bias is a little cotton stripe cut in the bias, that is 45 degrees, of the fabric. It's usually pre-folded like so in stores and we will need to fold it again lengthwise with an iron before working with it. The final ideal width, should you buy it in your local store, is about 10 to 12 millimeters. After washing your fabrics, it's time to press them flat. When that's done, we will fold them widthwise, right sides together once, then a second time so as to quickly and cleanly cut our fabric stripes. With a rotary cutter and a cutting ruler, we'll start by removing the raw edge to make things as neat as possible before measuring the width of our stripes. Remember, this width equals the length of our triangle, seam allowance included. In our example, that's 22 cm. Then, placing the ruler at 90 degrees, we can cut our stripes. Of course, you can use a pair of scissors and in that case, I highly recommend you to trace the lines with tailored chalk or a regular pen before cutting. I have already cut two stripes in the other two fabrics, so we can now move on to cutting our triangles. Let's unfold a stripe so as to have it folded once only, right sides together. This way we will cut the triangles two by two, which will be quite practical for later. Starting from the folded side, let's place marks every 21 cm, which is in our case the width of our triangle, seam allowance included. On the bottom we need to mark first half the width, 10.5 cm for less, then we go on marking full widths. The marks will be staggered, which will allow us to trace our triangles. So width, width and width, and when we don't have enough fabric left to trace another width, half width, followed by width, width and width. Now that's a mouthful. <laughs> Following the marks, it's time to cut our triangles. Again, use what you have at home. Scissors will work perfectly if you trace your cutting lines first, of course. Be careful to cut both layers at once without moving them. At the end of the stripe, the folded triangle has the right measurements as well. It will find its soulmate when we will cut the second stripe of this fabric.
We have now cut our pairs of triangles. They are already conveniently placed right sides together and we will make sure that they remain like so by pinning them. I have done the same off camera with the other two fabrics and everybody is pinned right sides together, anxious to see what's happening next. We are going to make a row of straight stitches like so at 5mm from the edge, making sure to consolidate the seam at both ends and at the pointy head. So take off the first pin, place your fabric under the press of foot, grab the threads to help the start of your sewing, a few back stitches and let's go. The needle, the press of foot and the fabric are placed so as to make the stitches at 5mm from the edge exactly. Find the right markers for you and sew straight. Once arrived at the head, take off the second needle, make a few back and forth stitches, lift the presser foot, pivot the fabric, lower the presser foot back in place, a few other back and forth stitches and the head will be solid enough for us to cut off the excess fabric without danger later on. Once we reach the third pin, consolidate the seam again and without cutting the threads, let's go on sewing the next flag. This technique is a great time saver, energy saver and thread saver. Before turning our flags inside out, we need to cut out the excess fabric at the head. Then choose your tool to turn it out properly and if you're using scissors, make sure not to cut the fabric. And also to make things perfect, we'll cut some of the fabric allowance at the sides, which will allow us to insert the flags within the bias quite easily. Now the most important step, and also the most tedious one, <laughs> ironing each and every single flag flat. And you can't just leave out this step, I'm afraid. To rest a little bit, let's have a little fun. <laughs> this gives me quite a few ideas by the way, but let's not forget the purpose of our tutorial. So let's go back to our bias now. I grab one end, open it completely, fold the edge over, and close it back before pinning it in place. Before inserting the first flag in the bias, we are going to leave about 50 to 60 centimeters, according to what your needs are, to be able to hang the bunting. By the way, I made my own bias, but if you buy it in a store, as I said before, buy it pre-folded to save yourself some precious time. We are now inserting our first flag in the bias and pinning it in place. Now for the next one you can place it right after the first or you may want to leave a little gap between them. Here for instance we are going to place them 5 cm apart. Use pins to mark your distances and guide you. Open your bias, place your flag at the pins level and make sure to push it right against the folds of the bias, it's really important. Then pin it. This process takes a little bit of time, but don't give up on doing a clean job, otherwise the end result may suffer. The bias has to be perfectly placed. Let's go on pinning. Again, we'll leave a little gap before the next flag. After the flower fabric and the dark green, it's time to insert some light green. Be creative, you are free to choose your colors, the way you alternate them, and if you want more than three fabrics, of course. And voila, your turn, pin the rest of the flags, we will see each other again in front of our sewing machines. We are going to sew our bias at 1 or 2 millimeters from the edge, 
depending on you, you know, liking risks or not. And that all the way through. So starting at one end, I adjust the bias under the presser foot and place my needle so as to stitch at one or two millimeters. Again, use the threads to help you get started. And don't forget to make a few back stitches. Take your time since we are stitching so close to the edge. We want to make sure that the needle catches the other side of the bias as well. If you made your own bias or needed to fold the one you bought, you understand now how crucial it is to fold it right in the middle and to have two sides of identical width. Otherwise, you may end up with stitches on the flag and none on the bias on the other side. But don't be scared, if you take your time every step of the way, the result will be perfect. Voila, we are going to sew like this until the end of the bunting. The length depends on how many flags you prepared, on their width and on how much gap you decide to leave between them. Be patient, take your time and check the other side of your flags often to make sure the stitches are perfectly placed there too. Once you reach the end of the bunting, consolidate your seam with a few back stitches as well and cut the threads on both ends. You might want to take some of the layers in with a needle and make a few invisible hand stitches to finish it off. And again, check your sewing on one side, on the other. And voila, you are done! Congratulations! Thank you so much for watching this tutorial to the end. I truly hope you'll make your own bunting soon. Subscribe to the channel, leave me a message and like this video. It takes a few seconds and makes a huge difference. So in advance, a big thank you. Merci. <laughs> bye bye. A bientôt.